please uh, rise for the um, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Louis Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella is here. Uh, Francis Alimo, absent. Uh, Kiran Majbudar. Here. Uh, Kenneth Holinsky, uh, absent. Vinnie Gorillo. Here. Uh, Christian D'Antonio. Here. And Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Thank you. Seeing that Commissioner Holinsky and Commissioner Alimo are not available tonight, um, Alternate Commissioner Grillo and Alternate Commissioner Lefakis will be sitting in as a full time member in their place. Commissioner D'Antonio is an alternate, but he certainly, as you know, you can't participate, you just can't vote. Take a motion to accept the minutes of Thursday, July 28th. So moved. Motion Second. made by Commissioner Higley, seconded by Commissioner DeGray to accept the minutes of July 28th. Is there any discussion or changes? Nope. Seeing none, all those who accept these minutes, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand, please. Aye. aye. Let the record show that, yep, let the record show that it was a Six nothing vote to accept the minutes with yep. Commissioners Lefakis and Commissioner Grillo abstaining. Yep. Is there any public participation? Seeing none, you don't know, participate as far as nothing that's on the agenda. Any public participation? Any public participation? Seeing none, correspondence. Is there any correspondence tonight? Act for protection. None. Seeing none, new business. Uh, regulation review. Hi. So this is our first time meeting for 2023 for the Aquifer Protection Program. Um, the last meeting we had was last year, in which case a majority of our businesses were registered and they were okay to go. Um, there's a couple of businesses left in Enfield that are still waiting to get their registration into our office. Um, and then I would just like to recap on some of the regulations that um, the EPA has jurisdiction over. Um, the main point of the commission is to protect groundwater for public drinking supply. When applicants come in with registered activities, um, we inspect them for compliance, make sure that they're environmentally safe and that there's no um, violations found on site, there's no leaking contaminants into the groundwater, the soil is protected, any storm um, catch basins are safe from any leaking contaminants. Barrels have secondary confinement and are stored inside on impervious surfaces. Any outside dumpsters, if they're rusting or if they have holes in them, should be repaired or replaced. Any metal racks that are usually outside are recommended to be kept inside the building and away from any access to water runoff. Um, basically, the main point is it's like looking at these applications for an environmental review. It doesn't not about the use of the business or the use of the property or anything about the site doesn't really come into this type of play with this commission. It's all about environmental groundwater protection. Um, there's other agencies that are involved in this program. Just to reiterate, it is an unfunded state program. So most of the regulations that we work with with this program are very, they're kind of challenging to understand and implement. Um, we've dealt with a couple um, in 2020 and 2021 that were a little bit hard to get registered. Um, a lot of the businesses in Enfield, they don't really have regulated activities, except the ones that are over the aquifer are registered and protected. And then I did make you a binder a while back. You should still have that. If you don't have a binder, please let me know. It contains all the regulations you need to be able to help you interpret these applications, understand what everything is, and be able to make a decision on them. You are allowed to put conditions on registrations as long as they're reasonable and not out of your jurisdiction. Um, if a condition is in retrospect to the use of the property, it might not be in your jurisdiction. Conditions could be, for example, um, covering metal racks during storm events or putting them inside a building during storm events or requiring a dumpster to have secondary confinement. Just m more environmental protective type of conditions. And then, of course, I'll be here to help you to make sure that those conditions aren't outside your jurisdiction and that everything is legal and proceeding to the regulations. 
And then lastly, with the regulations, when we look for compliance, there's three different agencies that we take into consideration. First and foremost are our local regulations, which are a copy from the state regulations. Um, and if something isn't in local regulations, then we look at the next hierarchy, which is the Connecticut State Regulations for Agencies. These ones have a little bit more detailed regs than the local ones do. So it includes things about floor area or BMP practices, construction methods to look out for, salt use for winter, more detailed regulations than what we would find in our local regulations. And then lastly, if there's something that we can't find in the local regulations or we can't find in the state regulations, we refer to the state statutes. The state statutes uh, have um, jurisdiction over all the regulations. If it's in the state statute and not in our local reg, then the state statute is what we follow. Um, so do you have any questions about the regulations? I do have one question, or at least something I wish, wish you'd get on the record for us um, so that all the commissioners understand and everyone understands in the town. If I'm not mistaken, did we not receive an extension from the state of Connecticut in the compliance this? Wasn't this something that was enacted back in 2012 or something? Yeah, so Enfield has been struggling with this program ever since the state first implemented it, as well as many other municipalities in Connecticut. Um, so basically, the program came into Enfield around 2006-ish, 2008. Um, a majority of properties in Enfield did register at the time where there was no fee to register. Um, things were, they were mostly focused on getting these businesses in so they can continue to operate. And then in 2013, um, some of them didn't renew their registration. So basically every five years, a business needs to renew the registration or if there's a change of owner, the owner needs to come in and change the ownership or if they're adding a new activity to their property, they need to apply for a permit. And then <clears throat> these are good for five years, permits are good for 10. So 2013 came around and a majority of businesses did not renew. There was a notice failure to go out to them to renew. Even though the responsibility is on the business owner, um, the town can still aid in helping them remember to renew their registration so they can continue to operate. So. I'm not really sure what happened to past predecessors. The ball got dropped along the way. Almost 90% of our businesses fell out of registration. So then I got hired in 2021. The state has been kind enough to give Enfield a forgiveness. Um, there is a fine associated for the town for not being in compliance with this. And if that's the case, the state has jurisdiction to come into Enfield, revoke the authority of the APA, and then APA would fall under the state. Um, that's not good for Enfield. The state is a little bit more strict than we are here in the local level, um, and they're not afraid to shut businesses down if they don't comply with the regulations. That's not something we want here in Enfield. Um, my goal is to help all the citizens of Enfield come into compliance. Um, if it means working around one thing, hopefully we can come to a solution. And um, as of 20, the end of 2022, we have about 90% of our businesses are back and registered. I am waiting on about three, three or four more businesses, and then that's about it, and hopefully Enfield will be in compliance with the state. I did submit a new inventory to DEEP showing that we have been working diligently with our businesses, and we are doing registrations, and our conditions are legal, and they are in compliance. There's no threat to the groundwater, and the water companies are happy. Um, so lately that's been good, and we have a couple left, so hopefully we can manage to finish that list before 2024 rolls around, and we won't have to deal with this for about five or four years. <laughs> so. Thank you very much, George. I, I asked that question so that all the commissioners got caught up to date on that information that we're almost, mm -hmm. you know, down the road here. It's like three or four more businesses We're, we're left. very close. Yeah. There are annual inspections that the business owners um, should be doing with the APA agent, which, um, you know, our office has been a little bit short-staffed lately, so I have not been able to follow through with that inspection, but I trust our businesses, and they have their registration. They know what they should be doing, and, of course, I'm sure if anything came up along their time frame, they would reach out to us, hopefully. That's the hope. <laughs> um, but like I said, this program is very difficult to understand, and it's very challenging to implement. Um, I had have talked to a couple of attorneys like Dwight Merriam to try and work out some of these problems. A lot of other towns that have Oxford protection areas are also struggling with these. But when it comes down to the matter about how these regulations are written, it's ultimately the state legislators. And the state legislators have the power to change them. Um, all we do is enforce and follow. Thank you, which kind of leads me to, if I don't, if I may, may as chairman, just again, because we take this opportunity to just mention again that this is an unfunded 
um, set of statutes that the state has, I don't want to say forced upon the towns, but it's given to towns to implement and protect the drinking water, in our case of Connecticut Water Company and Hazardo Water Company. And that's pretty much what it is from an environmental standpoint, just to rehash everyone so we clearly understand where we are with this board. And we're almost there. We're, we're almost there. Very so. close. <laughs> Commissioner Mashadar? Yeah, I think I'd like to uh, thank you for supporting the local town uh, application and follow-up requirements. And that's exactly what we're looking for, to help the businesses do good in our town. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Did you have any, something else you wanted to report on, or did you just want to give us this report? Or? Um, I just have an update. Um, Please. Some, some of our previous applicants are here um, for some help, so hopefully we can help okay. them with their issues and we can work towards a solution. Okay. Um, before we go into that, I'm just going to go down a list. You all should have received an update in your packet from me, just a quick little couple of sentences about some things that I've been working on, some things that you can expect to see within this year or maybe early next year, depending on their time frames. So a couple weeks ago, maybe late November, December, I received a phone call from Linda Hollingsworth. She is an environmental consultant for Intertech. Um, she had contacted me about a client and field of APA activities who did not realize at first that these are registered activities and they need to be registered. Um, she refused to give me the business information out of respect to her client, and she had told me that they would reach out to us before the January meeting, which they have not. I don't know if they're nervous about submitting or if they need help, but I have told her to gently nudge them because I can help them when they contact us. It's, it's better to have them come in sooner than later. That way, when the state um, when the state's forgiveness period is over, they can still continue to operate. Um, so that's that. Um, the second thing I've been working on is the last property on Dust House Road, 6 Dust House for Roger and Valerie Brassier. Um, they were notified twice in 2021 to register. Um, they've had multiple letters throughout 2022. And then I recently sent a certified mail notice of requirement for APA registration. I did receive a signed green card back as proof that they did receive the letter. I just have not heard out from them yet. This can result in a notice of violation, but I'd rather not pursue that avenue. I I'd rather give them some more time to reach out to me. So I'm thinking if they can't reach out to us before 2024, we might have to do something different. But I'm just trying to explore all my options before we go down that route. So again, because we're, we're up against a time level here, we don't want the yes. state to intercede. So that, in some cases issue. here, if we don't intercede, then the state is going to. And that's not healthy for the town of Anfield, correct? No, they're very strict. Yeah. And they don't have not like mercy, but they don't really show forgiveness the way we do. And they're not really... I don't know how willing they are to find solutions with the businesses here in town. They're, they have a, they have one goal, and that's to protect the groundwater. And if something is not following the regulation, then it needs to be fixed immediately. Um, have you paid them a visit you know, with the form? No, because they're never home. They're never there. It's an industrial zoned area. Um, they're not allowed to live at those properties. Um, if they are, then it's a violation with the ZEO. But I have not been able to meet the owners or receive a phone call or anything like that. And I unfortunately do not have their number to be able to contact them via phone. So the best I can do is letters and hopefully they reach out to me. Thank you. I figured that. <laughs> I'm gonna try, I'm gonna figure it out, but I'm giving them some time too because I understand they might have some medical issues happening as well. So um, the next one I'm working on is the Gulf Gas Station on Hazard Ave, which is owned by Triano Properties. I did contact the Triano family as a notification to register for the gas station. Um, the last time I heard was late December that the tenant is working on an application. We just have not received one yet. Is that on a corner of? South and North Maple. Maple and, yep. and Hazard, correct? Yep. yep. It's a fairly clean would, gas would station. I, it should be fairly it, easy to get the registered. Where the donut shop is also or used to be? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, the next one that's upcoming that you, you sh might see this year is a ownership transfer for 100 by Bright Meadow Boulevard for, for Mass Mutual. Um, if the ownership transfer is to Fast Track Realty, they will be coming in to change their registration for Aquifer Protection. Another one that's upcoming is 66 Enfield Street, same situation, pending new ownership. Um, it will become Moms of Enfield's second location, and Juan Scott will come in to renew his ownership with the agency. 
and that's the gentleman we had earlier in the year 2022 correct yep different person though um, okay. the site's fairly clean all these sites are very clean I don't really have any um, <clears throat> violation concerns of any of them as are most of our businesses here in Enfield. <clears throat> the last one is for 8 Dust House, um, Scott Daigle, Daigle's Welding. Um, so every now and again, I do inspections in the area, mostly wetlands inspections, because aquifer isn't always on my plate. Um, and upon doing inspections in the area, um, Mr. Daigle's property has some vehicles parked over the ground. Um, he's currently registered for the activity of tea production or fabrication of metal products with the condition that metal hanging racks be covered during all rain events. Um, I sent him an email back in, I think it was December, um, about just, you know, keep the vehicles from bare ground just to protect it from leaks from oil, gas, stuff like that. Um, on January 4th, I received an email response back just about the definition of impervious surfaces. And then I followed up with a phone call, just a touch base about the next APA meeting, which is tonight. And just to have a brief conversation about the vehicles and the metal racks. Um, I wasn't able to set up an inspection with Mr. Daigle. He had some personal conflicts at the time. Um, and then he did mention that he was planning to put some type of roof cover over the racks um, or a patio because um, he also does not wish for them to get rusty. He needs them for his business. And then the, the vehicles that I saw on on the property were actually client projects he was working on. Um, and he's here tonight to get some input about that. Okay. Is there any comments? Is there any comments you would like to add? No. Is there, what's the resolution to this? Um, you can come up. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, come on up and why don't you identify yourself for the record? I, um, me. I reckon. Come on up, have a seat and identify yourself for the record. Make sure the mic is on, please. Red? Yeah. yeah. My name is Scott Daigle, owner of Daigle's Diversified Welding 8 Dust House Road. This is my father, Clifford Daigle. Thank you. Talked to Georgina. She told me to put comp, told me I could put compacted soil. That's all done. Okay. Cars are parked back on the compacted soil. We brought in at least 55 yards of compact uh process the compact soil it's all done okay. we just have it with work and stuff we're trying to finish everything to move it where it's supposed to be that's where we're at right now okay i got videos i'll send it to her in an email um, so she or she can come down yeah mr daigle unfortunately he's one of our business owners who these regulations do not really help him um his site is fairly small for his business he's very successful so he has seemed to outgrow the size of his property however he does not wish to relocate which yeah. is you know normal of all of our businesses. Um, it's just, this program is just about being more environmentally conscious. So you just have to be wary of, you know, rain events, any vehicles that could leak any contaminants into the ground, even if they are fixed and you are 100% sure they won't leak, it's still good practice just to have maybe a cardboard underneath there or- You um, got them, them pans. That, perfect, so that sounds good. And um, if the, the agency- ones that leak, we put, like if we got a bucket loader in the yard, we know it's leaking, we got, Believe it or not, simplest thing, the, the old plastic bed liners in the back of pickups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We slide it in there, and that's what we're doing. If they're leaking, you know, but cars that are parked and been parked for months, they don't leak oil until you start them up. You know what I mean? The engine it has to go through the seals and all that. So we got some welded trucks that are parked there that we keep just in case we need an extra one. We're not, we're in, you know, nothing's leaking, but I did what she said. She sent me some uh about impervious soil we put that down we got it all done the racks are going on to a, a site where there's going to be a pad and a cover the steel racks the only thing with the steel racks my steel is not cold roll so there's no oil on the steel we buy hot i mean excuse me it's cold roll not hot roll right hot roll steel has am i wrong corinne has oil right cold roll is doesn't have any oil surface on it so I, I, we we never worried about it because there was never oil on them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which job was it? Hot roll. Hot roll. That's right. Hot roll don't have no oil. That, yeah. That's the one that rusts. Yeah. Well, like, so, if it, I can, if I can, we cut, we cover it up now. So, like, if I can, thank you. I mean, thank you for coming and thank you for. Sounds like you're you're talking with George and you're trying to implement some of the changes. I think one of the issues we wanted to make tonight is, we certainly understand your predicament yeah. on that lot. And the same token is kind of one aspect that's in conflict with some of the state regulations, you know, not of, not of your doing. Um, so if you continue to work with Georgie and staff and 
be environmentally sensitive of your area, knowing what limitations that you have, so that Georgia can sign off and we can keep moving forward here, then we don't have the state coming. I think that's why I asked that question earlier, if you were catching why I asked. Yeah, yeah, I get we that. We don't want that to happen, because not that. just your business, it would affect everybody. So I get that. we're just asking for you to um, um, you know, just work with, with staff to implement the reasonable requests that they make. Okay, now last year I brought up, I don't know if it matters with you guys or not, but there's a pond on our property that the town road is dumping into. That the town created in 06, that? Uh, it's a while back when they put the storm, storm they put storm They cut the curb in. and all this, all the crap from the road is going into that pond. I've been talking about it and talking about it and nobody's done a thing about it. Well, because there was a that oil rings all over that pond every storm. There was a puddle there. When I so had the business, Mr. There was a Mr. Chair. There. Excuse me, yeah, 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 we can't have three conversations. So let me ask a question on the curb cut because I'm willing to at least, um, See if I can find some information. Yeah. So the curb cut is off Dust House Road? It's on Dust House it's Road. It's on Dust House Road, but basically Dust House Road is like this. So you're saying that the water is going Dust up. Dust Road ain't like that. In, that. in your area, it's maybe more flatter, so you're saying the water is That's going South down. South Maple. Yeah. South Maple comes down yep. to the hill. Yeah, I know the area. Take, take it right on Dust yep. House Road. I know the area. The town pitched the road right in front of our pond. Okay. It's, it, it abuts that Roger Bruce here yep. and our property. We own like a quarter of it. Roger owns three quarters of it. And it created another pond behind our shop. Okay. Prior to that pond being put in, there was a pipe going across the road from the wells from when Potter Hall, when yeah. the blast was. Yeah, down and to the Scanic, right? Correct. It yep. was like a silt pond. Yep. Mr. Chair. And they took yep. all that out. So I actually do have answers to that. Okay. I actually pulled the previous approval for the road construction. Thank you. Um, I have that file available for public view if anybody would like to come see it. It's a historical file, so I, I requested it from the archives. Um, I have been researching the site plans and the reports submitted during that time frame. Um, it was a town reconstruction project. There is a riprap that was installed by the pond. It was to aid in water runoff. In the report, it stated that water had already been previously running in that that direction as well they just wanted to and they wanted to basically improve upon the drainage there because it was having there was flooding issues and some issues with the grading of the road so I do have that file in regards to the statement where it mentioned that water had been already previously flowing in that direction I don't have anything else to back that up just what's in that file okay can I okay. interject you, you can on the other side of the road yep. the pipe is still there the town never okay. took it out Okay. So there was a pipe, when the pond got to a certain level, there was a pipe, and it would drain into the spillway, and then it would settle into that settlement, and then it would run into the Scantic. The, it the does, road is tipped like this. It yeah. does drain into the Scantic, it still which does. is what it was before as well. Okay. All right, we have the, you know, we, we hear your, and we have the information, we'll, you know. We'll move on from that. Is there any questions? Um, if, if I yep. may, real quick, Mr. Chair, yes. I would like to maybe visit that some more to see I'll if there's you. a solution we could come to. Maybe there's another file about okay. that situation that I haven't found, um, but that is something I'm working on. When citizens address concerns to me, I do like to follow through. Okay. Okay. It's just terrible, the poor pond. Yeah, well, I've, seen, I, I've seen the pond. I know the pond. All right. Does it sound, skate on it. <laughs> does it sound like a, we're, we're working together now? I hope so. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Mm -hmm. I'm good. I think so. Georgie, are you all set? Yep. So um, we'll follow up for an inspection if that's okay, Mr. Yeah, Daigle. Next week probably um, will be fine for me. Yep. It's just really difficult because these regulations are, they're not really business friendly. Yeah. If, if I were to be really strict about them, we would have to do things like um, make Mr. Daigle pay his lot and he would only be able to use 10% of his business floor area. Yeah. He needs his whole business. Yeah. He works on rather large projects. It's just this, yeah. these regulations are very hard to work with. Um, so I'm very thankful for Mr. Daigle coming in today to speak with you about his property issues and that we can come to a solution. Yeah, me too. I am too as chairman. And I think that speaking for the commission, we all are. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions for the applicant or Georgie on this? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in today. I'm just glad I don't have to be dealing with this. <laughs> <laughs> My problem. Is there any? Oh, is there any other business? Oh, wait for Georgie. Like it when things can come together. I'll see? send it to you. Thank you. Is there you any other business of the aquifer protection?
So. Okay. Right. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion made by uh, Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to adjourn the Act for Protection Agency meeting at 655. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. The record shows unanimous to adjourn this meeting. The meeting on the planning zoning will start in about five or six minutes. Commission to together here on Thursday, January 26th at 7 o'clock. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Fire evacuation, in case of a fire, please go right out the back doors here, right behind you, or down the hall, out the stores and down the hall and out the back, and please, you know, walk away from the building as far away as possible. Secretary, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Lou Fiore? Here. Virginia Higley? Here. Linda DeGray? Here. 
Francis Alimo is absent. Kiran Majmudar. Here. Kenneth Holinsky, absent. Vinny Grillo. Here. Christian D'Antonio. Here. Nick Lefakis. Here. And John Petronell is here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alimo and Commissioner Holinsky are not in attendance tonight. So based on our rotation, com uh, Alternate Commissioner Grillo and Alternate Commissioner Lefakis will be sitting as full-time members. And uh, Alternate Commissioner D'Antonio will be the backup if needed. Again, he can't participate. He just uh, cannot vote. I'd like to entertain a motion. We do have to make a couple changes to the agenda tonight, and I do apologize for that. Entertain a motion to move 11B, the CGS 824 referral to the public participation portion of the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Higley. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Commissioner DeGray to move item 11C, assume 11B, CGS 824 to public participation. All those in favor, please I signify by saying aye. 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 The record show is unanimous for that agenda change. Also, our error in addition. We need to move PH 355-78 Park Avenue to old public hearings. So we'll move 11C to old public hearings. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Higley, seconded by Second. Commissioner DeGray to move item 11C to item 10, old public hearings. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. Mr. Now, Chairman? Yes. I, I think the, the uh, goal was to have the um, CGS 824 after public participation. Oh, I'm sorry, Not presentation. Through. Yep, Just sorry. Just clarification. So let's do that motion. Yep, you're absolutely right. Let's do that. Entertain a motion instead of public so, participation item eight presentations. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Higley, second by Commissioner DeGray to move item 11B to item eight presentations. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lori, for that correction. Approval of minutes. One second here. I had a backup agenda. Make a motion to approve the minutes of Thursday, January 12th. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Higley, Second. seconded by Commissioner DeGray to accept the minutes of January 12th. Is there any discussion, changes that need to be made to the minutes? No. Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 The records show that it was Unanimous with Commissioner Grillo abstaining. <clears throat> Everybody did see the new town attorney report? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. No discussion on that. The one that was dated January 25th. We got the email on that one? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Now we're going to public participation. At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to Planning and Zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, providing that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the Commission may be pending that also includes any legal pending uh, cases. Is there anyone who would like to participate? Yes, please come forward. Mike is red. Yes. Please uh, identify yourself for the record. Your name and address, please. Yes. I don't that one, right? <clears throat> Hello, Planning and Zoning Committee members. I haven't met you personally, but I'm happy to be here. My name is Susan Smith. I live at 115 Brainerd Road. I appreciate the chance to speak, and I thank all of you for all the hard work you do for the town of Enfield. I'm sure it is complicated and difficult at times with a lot of different personalities and opinions. I'm not here to be adversarial in any way at all. I just want to voice a couple general concerns and make a suggestion or two to the planning and zoning and to the town council and the people of Enfield. I'm not planning to speak specifically at this time on the issue of leasing the park. Uh, my husband of 53 years is Stephen Smith, who taught math and then physics at Enfield High School for 45 years. His family was good friends with Agnes Brainerd. I'm not going into that. His grandparents came here as immigrants and contributed much to the town. Many of the descendants of their 10 children still live here or nearby. When we have a family picnic, it's crazy. 
uh, there's a story about the Smiths and the park, which I'm going to put together to share at another time. I'm a writer and researcher, retired from education and social work. Uh, I have I have my own business, which is a small publishing company. I am also a descendant of most of the early settlers of the town of Enfield, including Collins, Jones, Gear, Pease, Pryor, Gowdy, Strong, Stebbins, and others. And, uh, okay, I can't mention that one. <laughs> I am an avid genealogist and naturalist. I love this town, and I admit I have not been involved in politics of it as much as I should have. I believe that I, like many people I've heard from, have just trusted our town officials to do what is right and just. And from what I'm hearing, many have been disappointed. I was pleased to read a document on the mission of planning and zoning, which states, in part, the planning department's mission is to help ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the people of Enfield and to provide a better quality of life through high professional standards of planning, community development, and enforcement services high professional standards. I'm sure that's not only on paper, but is the moral intent of the people on this respected board. I very much appreciate the documents of the POCD, the Plan of Conservation and Development, which include to protect, preserve, and enhance the aesthetic recreational and ecological fun functions of natural resources. That's page eight. And also for Enfield to become recognized as a tree city, as designated by the Arbor Day Foundation. Part of this involves planting more trees and replacing trees that have been removed or damaged by development. And that means mature trees, not tiny saplings. There are other plans for honest and healthy development, which also I hope is not only a pledge on paper. Seriously, I have been told, I was told I could speak about the proposal to lease, but now that I can't, I'll save that for another time. Um, Seems a little like cementing the sidewalk before you plan the path, but okay. Now, lastly, I would like to request any documents related to the town council, how, what they have sent to this committee. And I want to speak to the citizens of Enfield, to all of you, all of you, to get involved. People <laughs> understand what is happening in town. Attend meetings or watch them on video. Understand. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Almost. Attend meetings. Uh, understand what is going on and speak out about it. We should have better oversight of our elected and appointed officials and an honest and concerned ethics committee. We need to think seriously. Oh, I can't get into Parkland. A lot of other things need to be done in this town. We also need to think more deeply about our moral obligation to the homeless people of Enfield who suffer greatly as we ignore them. I think we ought to honestly consider helping our beloved Felician sisters. Ms. Smith, this has nothing to do with, with, with playing zoning, so if you can wrap it up, oh, I really would appreciate it. it. Thank you. Okay. Um, you. Your time's almost I wanna, up. I, Okay, I thought it might be. Anyway, we are trusting you, elected and appointed officials, to do the right things. And I am going to try to promote more participation. People want to complain after the fact, but they don't come to meetings or participate or volunteer to be on committees. So, you know, we end up with adversarial situations. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in public participation? Anyone else? Yep, please. Yep, please come forward. Hello, my name is Terry Ginsburg. I live on Roy Street. I was wondering and hoping that somebody could explain to me why we're having this discussion before we even you even inform us about what's going on. I read a little bit on Facebook, which prompted me to come here mm -hmm. because Facebook, whatever. Um, but anyways, I'm a little confused as to what I can say and what I can't say since we haven't talked about this. Sure. Let me, Park so thing. let me explain. We usually don't do this, but I will explain that's coming up shortly with the presentation. There is no public participation on this issue because it's on our agenda. If you want to have a discussion about this particular, I'm sure you're talking about the referral, correct? The Brainerd Park referral. Right. Then you need to really talk with, the, with staff, the um, town manager, or your town councilman. We can't converse on this issue with you tonight on this referral. It's not open for the public. If you want to wait here, you're going to hear some discussion with us talking with staff. Um, and some, that might clear some of your questions, but other than that, we really can't discuss, and I'm not really going to be able to do any more of this. No, I, I, I just, I just, you know, because it's not open to public participation. Not, not with us at you this don't point. Get, you don't, okay. You don't care what we have to say. We, we all care. Please don't, don't do that. Please. We all care what the residents want to do here in the town. And I can't really do this, but I'm going to stick up for the board. That's just the way the rules and the laws are laid out. So. You're telling me that after you explain everything to us as we sit here, I need to make an appointment with one of you? No, you, we can't talk with you about it. We're like judges. We can't talk with you. We, you know, I, so I, how, do, how, how do I voice my opinion about through it? Through staff. To the staff? To staff. Okay. Okay? And I don't mean to be rude. I'm just being factual. This is the first time I've come to one of these, well, second yeah. time I've come to one it's of okay. these meetings. So I'm a little confused. It's okay. It can be confusing. Absolutely. You're not the only one. <laughs> You're welcome. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak in front of the commission? Anyone else for a third time? Seeing them, close public participation. Moving on to the next thing on the agenda, which is bond releases. Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, um, uh, first bond releases uh, for 10 Lego Way erosion sedimentation control bonds. Um, and. Uh, like to make a motion um, to approve the uh, uh, the bond release for um, for Ten Lego Way, which was regarding public hearing number two nine three four, in accordance with the staff recommendation, which is dated January twenty six two thousand and twenty three, um, and a sedimentation control bond in the amount of seven thousand um, dollars, and site restoration bond in the amount of forty four thousand dollars. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Commissioner Lefakis. Is there any discussion? Is there any any comments from staff on this uh, bond release? Not at no? this time. Okay. Thank you. Seeing none. Looking down the line here, Mr. Secretary, you recall the roll on this, and then whenever you're ready. Yep. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Uh, Kiran Majmudar. Four. Uh, Vinnie Gorillo. Four. Nicholas Lefakis. Four. And John Petronel is four. The record shows unanimous for the uh, bond release. So, you know, now we're on to presentations, which basically gets us right back to where we were before, which is CGS 824. I believe the town manager is here. And I do have a statement I'm going to read before you start, Honorable Town Manager, if you don't mind, please. Thank you, because I know there's a lot of people here today that are interested in this particular subject, and as chairman of this commission, as you guys know by now what I usually try to do, try to keep my thoughts. I did write something down, so I'm going to read it for the record. I need to bring to everyone's attention that we are here tonight only to act on the town council's 824 referral as to whether the town should continue to negotiate a potential lease of a portion of Brainerd Park to a private developer, and nothing more. This is not about the merits or the particulars of the potential for the development of the Mass Mutual and Brainerd Park properties. Thus, any comments by staff, 
the commissioners or even the public on that subject might result in some of the commissioners having to recruit themselves if, and a big if, if when this proposal comes before us in the future, as it could be challenged that some commissioners were pre-proposed to the project. Thus, with that in mind, we will not be having a public hearing on this matter, as that is at the discretion of the commissioners. At this time, if you need to discuss the overall proposal, please do so with the town council and or with staff. I should also note for the record that an if a negative vote occurs by this commission on this matter, that can be overridden by the town council. See none? Madam Town Manager, please proceed. Okay. Good evening. My name is Ellen Zappo Sasu, and I am the town manager here in Enfield, and through that role, I'm here tonight to present to you and speak to the referral that was sent to you from the town council regarding the potential lease of Brainerd Park. Um, before I do, though, Mr. Chairman, I do want to just make one qualifying statement. Um, having been involved in land use for many years, I do understand how confusing the process can be, and I think it would be beneficial for those who are listening from home and those that are here today to understand that this is the extremely very, very first step in a very long process. A Section 8-24 referral is required by the State of Connecticut that anything that the Town Council does to either acquire, lease, dispose of, or in any way change or modify public land must first come before the plan, the Planning and Zoning Commission. So that is why we are here. I further want to qualify that if anybody got a little upset by your statement about there will be no public hearing, to be specific that that is regarding the discussion tonight. That's correct. If this proposal were to go forward, we have many, many weeks ahead of us with detailed plans where there will be public hearings, probably held both by the Town Council as well as through the land use process. At a very cursory look, it seems to me that that would include your board, probably the Wetlands Commission, and many others. So um, just to be clear, tonight is only for, as you mentioned, shall the Planning and Zoning Commission give permission to the Town Council to continue the conversations with the proposed developer for a mass mutual site. Thank you. With that being said, I want to just highlight a couple of points. First, um, the actual document that should be before you is the resolution that's dated January 9th, where the recommendation was made on a referral to you for the review and action of the potential lease. So that is the first document that would be available to the public. I'd also like to share with you some of my comments that were made at the last town council meeting. We were discussing the fact that this proposal that was before us had far-reaching implications for Enfield. As you know, Mass Mutual is a 65-acre office park, which as of December 31st is vacant since Empower has now left the site. They have been one of our top 10 taxpayers for a number of years. As of the last grand list, Mass Mutual was at number four. So when you think about use and you think about personal property and you think about what that means for Enfield, it is a significant impact. Over the course of the last three years, as Mass Mutual was downsizing and Empower took over a piece of that lease, we also had the overlay of COVID. The pandemic has changed the way all of us do business. Not only municipal government and the provision of services, but also corporate America, at-home businesses, and, and in a lot of cases, thankfully, has really inspired an entrepreneurial spirit in terms of how people do things differently. But unfortunately, one of the effects of the pandemic has been that there is absolutely no market for Class A office space of the size and magnitude that we have on Upper Route 5 in Enfield. So in terms of reinventing ourselves as a municipality, which now has a 65 acre empty vacant park there, um, what are we gonna do? Now, I'm gonna spend a few minutes with the plan of conservation and development, although it is not formally adopted because I think that that was very prescient and there are some sections in there that I'd like to reference. But as many of you know, since 2019, we have seen a complete reversal in how people do business. And as of October, this past October, the census data showed that 29% of Americans were working from home. 
We know that many of them are, many corporate citizens are also adopting a hybrid workplace schedule. And in fact, this week, as the hits continued to come, Lego informed us that they no longer have a need for their office space here and are going to be joining forces with their education office in Boston. Those employees from here are also on a three day out two, or three days in, two days out schedule. So again, these patterns are emerging. Full time remote work has definitely decreased and flexible work arrangements are coming. So we know that it's going to be extremely difficult to market that office park. But that doesn't mean that we're just going to take any offer that comes along. We have spent the last eight weeks exploring the opportunities of what that office park could be. And we are happy to say that we think that there is some potential for discussion here, which is why we are asking you to be an affirmative vote for the Section 8-24 so we can continue to explore this. Repurposing office parks like we have is going to help us stabilize our tax revenues, but it's also going to increase some of the quality of life issues. That parcel has already decreased in value $10 million from last year's grand list to this year's grand list. Just an uh, interesting fact. This proposal could also bring significant employment opportunities of all different types, full-time, part-time, seasonal for our young people. There's a lot of opportunities there as well. And most importantly, we're also looking at this from the long lens of economic impact, economic impact spillover, gas stations, convenience stores, restaurants, other hotels, sports hall of fame, basketball hall of fame, the casinos, Six Flags, our own other recreational opportunities and businesses, all of that is factoring into the discussions that we're having. So right now, we're looking at how do we effectively as policymakers factor in what has to happen. I'm going to say it again. This is a very initial first step in a very long land use process and uh, neighbors, interested citizens, all have an opportunity to be, to be heard if this were to move forward tonight. Brainerd Park is 32.6 acres. If you go back into the historical archives of the Enfield Historical Society, which they were very kind to share with me over the course of the last three weeks, there's also a very interesting news article which denotes that originally the park was supposed to be 16 acres of a donation. Um, I don't know where the other 16 came from, but I do have the will of Agnes Brainerd right here, where on October 22nd, 1958, she deeded over 32 acres. And the interesting part, and which was really our starting point in this conversation, was what did Agnes want? What, what was the purpose in her deeding over this land, this long valued family with deep roots in Enfield, but believe it or not, which I was shocked about, and I've only been here a year, was this was Enfield's first public park, 1958. The last paragraph says it all. It is the express wish that the above described premises be used for purposes of a park or playground to be known as the Agnes M. Brainerd Park, if at all possible. And if such use be not possible, then to be used for other proper municipal purposes or purpose. So we believe with um, that interpretation that we are within our rights to ask for you to consider this before you tonight. I also think it's important to talk about Brainerd Park now. And being a student of history myself and learning a little bit about Agnes Brainerd and her family, the fact that she was a teacher and felt strongly about her hometown, I wonder to myself, what would Agnes think if she were to drive through Brainerd Park today? And I'm thinking she would probably want to scold many of us who she gave this acreage to, and we were supposed to be that benevolent caretaker of that gift. We have, we have situations there. It is a, an erosion of public trust when you actually are given a gift such as this and you cannot maintain it, which we are not. There are several environmental challenges there, some of which are man-made, including some erosion issues, stormwater issues. We have flooding in that area, and those impacts are something that we take seriously. We believe that this could be the jewel that it was intended to be. I also believe that when I pull up the police call volume just for the last 12 months, and I see that there's daily directed patrols, 
and I ask the chief, why? Why is there a directed patrol? Why are we sending officers to Brainerd Park every day? And his answer was, well, it's just the best thing that we should do. I see suspicious in progress, suspicious activity, motor vehicle complaints, overdoses, 9-11 hang-ups, suspicious in progress. There was one that I didn't understand, and it was a UAV deployment. So I called back to the police department and asked what that was. That was for a situation where there was somebody overdosing, calling 911. We couldn't locate them. They couldn't give us their direction. And in the process of finding that gentleman, we stumbled across another deceased person. And so they sent up the uh, drone in order to see if there was any other issues in this area. Untimely, possible overdose, check on the welfare, property found, stolen property. This is not the park that I think all of us think Enfield residents deserve. So in keeping with that theme, what, what can happen? What are we looking at in terms of what this referral means? So in looking at the plan of conservation and development, that's before all of us. I started with page 10. And in here, for the community facilities, one of the summary points is, is that we as a community should invest in amenities. Enfield should invest in community facilities that function as placemaking amenities, parks, walking trails, et cetera. Well, this would do that. And the beauty of it would be that we would be partners and it wouldn't be coming out of taxpayer dollars. On page 20, I found it interesting that this, which is, I believe, a very pragmatic read, and I, and I compliment everybody that had a role in putting this together, the, there's an actual reference to the challenges that we're all facing in today's society. And there's a phrase in here that stood out to me, that through this, this challenge of planning, that we must, through the implementation of this plan, be proactive and signal the market that Enfield is serious about improvement and attracting investment. To effect positive change, this document should be used as a guidance document, which I agree with. Moving on, there is an entire section on page 50 under chapter six, the commercial and industrial development concerning economic development. And it's critical here that we understand that whereas this question tonight is about the use of approximately um, 23 acres, there's this larger focus of what this could be. So this chapter actually references the fact that office parks are a problem. Changing, changes in corporate structures, mergers, and acquisitions, and further changes in the location and utilization of office space have resulted in the loss of Lego, very nice to have that update, the Phoenix Insurance Company and Mass Mutual, the owner and occupant of the former Phoenix campus. So the economic findings in here states that we're vulnerable. The loss of jobs, population, young persons, and increased vacancies in certain commercial office and retail space create concerns regarding the future prosperity of the community. Now again, I don't wanna be an alarmist and I'm not just picking and choosing sections that I think fit, although it's important that we use this as the document that it's intended to be. This does not in any way, as a disclaimer, mean that the wetlands issues, the floodplain issues, and all of that should be disregarded. But for tonight, the fact of how you should understand that we arrived at our decision to send this referral to you is reflected in some of these same concerns. Under chapter seven, there's an entire introduction about community facilities and how they're important to us as a community. There's references to that they're expensive to build, to renovate, to maintain and operate, but they're critical infrastructure for our communities. In this case, we're gonna be seeing an investment that is not paid for by us. And in fact, the line where you see the um, inclusion of Brainerd Park in the acreage so that the proposal could have the fields that it requires to be viable are always gonna be owned by the town. They are built on town property. We are not giving away the land. If, God forbid, years from now, this business entity was no longer viable, that 12 plus five or so million dollars that I'm estimating is gonna be invested on that portion, never mind the park amenities that are being proposed on the other part of Brainerd Park are going to remain. They're ours. You can't take this up. This infrastructure remains. Another interesting note on page 55, 
where it talks about we need to do assessments locally. They're suggesting in this plan the facilities assessment to be updated and also a park and ball fields recreation assessment where we have a detailed evaluation of everything, including an assessment of the number of types of facilities and community size. Prior to this meeting, I spent 90 minutes downstairs with representatives from all of our sports organizations, youth and adult, uh, and special needs was represented. They're concerned because they have growth opportunities and we have nowhere to put them. There's field sharing, there's all kinds of issues, and none of our fields are in tip-top shape. Although we try consistently to make recommendations, we can't even rest fields according to best practices based on demand. So we're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and again, this speaks to the quality of life impact. Do we want families to look at Enfield and say, that's where I want to buy a house? Look at all they offer. And, and Enfield is extremely rich in the provision of services. What people get here for their tax dollars is extremely high. I'd like to continue to stabilize that. The most important two pieces that I want to end with is in Chapter 9, where the theme of this POCD proposal talks about sustainability and resilience. And I don't think that there's any place more appropriate to talk about sustainability and resilience than local government, especially what we have all been through during the pandemic. And it may be difficult for the average citizen to understand how difficult it was for those years because government didn't stop. So whereas some people stayed home, some people did, you know, changes to their lifestyle in order to protect themselves, government continued to run. We are in a perfect position to, to create a sustainable piece of really a legacy project here. But sustainability in our own plan that is up for adoption talks about sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And doing so must integrate and balance economic, environmental, and social goals. And in terms of resiliency, the key to resiliency is noted in this plan as diversity and having complex adaptive systems, which is our community, in order to work together. So again, these are great points that I think point to a positive affirmation of this referral. And lastly, I wanted to draw your attention to some of the maps that are part of the plan. Specifically, looking ahead, knowing that things are constantly in a state of flux, this plan of conservation actually proposes targeted investment areas. And one of them, as shown on page 84, is this corporate campus. So before this plan even came to fruition, People were smart enough to realize that we have challenges and now we have opportunities to meet them by continuing to have conversations. So I would just like to end with a great picture that I got from the Historical Society today. It's a picture of a crowd enjoying a picnic at what is now Brainerd Field, but what was part of the mansion. This was 1930, the 250th anniversary of Enfield. And what it speaks to me is people outside enjoying land that maybe wasn't public land at that point, but they were gathering as a community for a public reason to celebrate something. And I think that this resonates through generations and will continue to, to be an opportunity for us to do something that has a lasting impact on our community. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, my apologies that uh, the referral did not get into the packet. Yeah. And if you'd like, I could read it for the record, or somebody could read it for the record, or just take a moment. Sure, I'll, I'll do it. Go ahead. I'll do it. <clears throat> Basically, this was sent to the members of the Planning Zone Commission from Ellen Zappo Sasso, our town manager, who just did a very nice presentation for us, dated January 16th, 2023. The Town Council received the presentation at its January 9th, 2023 meeting concerning a proposed new use at 100 Bright Meadow Boulevard. The former Mass Mutual Office Park, Fast Track Realty LLC, has negotiated a below, mark, a below market value purchase price for Mass Mutual and is planning on renovating the two existing buildings into mixed use development. They are also proposing a new basketball building and 11 turf fields. The purpose of the referral is for the PZC to consider the request from Fast Track Realty to utilize a portion of the adjacent Brainerd Park acreage 
to add the additional numbers of field that makes the proposal financially feasible. Without the acreage from the easterly side of Brainerd Park, this project will not move forward. The will of Agnes Brainerd has been reviewed and her donation of the land was for recreational purposes. It is the belief of the Town Council that proposed use of fields conforms with the wishes of Agnes Brainerd. A subsequent phase of the project, Fast Track Realty LLC has proposed significant renovations to the park, including improvements to the softball field and other new amenities, which will be a benefit to Enfield residents. Town Council urges the PNZ to act solely on the issue of the transfer, sale or lease of public land component of Section 824 referral, recognizing that a full site plan re review and evaluation of land use and environmental impact issues would have a full airing and discussion at the time of the site plan application, that's for sure. The Town Council prefers to a lease so that the town retains ownership of the park. And I think that kind of gets back to some of my opening statements. Now I'm looking here, before I open up discussion, just looking at staff here, and we have a draft motion, but you know, basically there needs to be possibly some editing here. We haven't really gone through all these nine points. As a, as a group, so I think that I'm going to open it up to see if there's any discussion here besides myself. So I'm getting tired of talking about it. Does anyone else want to add anything here before we go through these? Are there any questions for the town manager while she's here or staff? Okay, does everyone clearly understand that we are acting as the planning commission for this, not the zoning at this point? Everybody understands the difference yeah. for this particular reference. We're acting as the planning commission which is a fundamental difference. So let's go through the findings, because I'm, I'm not sure we want to adopt all nine of these in the resolution. So first of all, the draft motion would be, because don't, we don't really have anything else but a draft motion, correct, Lori? Yes, that is correct. And please feel free to add your comments, your Matt, as we move along. Mm -hmm. More than welcome. Finding one. Would we want to adopt this one? The scope of the commission's advisory report is limited to the general policy question, lease a portion of the park for private commercial recreation project. However, the commission invokes the protections afforded into an under CGS 7159B with respect to any commission actions required in the future and associated with the related development project presented to the Enfield Town Council, which project is the basis for the council request for an advisory. Is everyone pretty, pretty happy with that particular finding? Yeah. Okay. Number two, Brainerd Park is a 32-acre public open space and recreational asset currently developed with uh, baseball, softball fields, a basketball court, volleyball court, and associated access drives and parking areas also has some playground equipment for young, younger people. Is everyone, that's a pretty valid statement. I don't think we missed anything there. The entire park is zoned R33. The budding lands are zoned BR Mass Mutual and R33 Southwest, R33 CWC property to the north. R33 East, land across the street on the Brainerd zoned R33. That's factual. And CWC is reference to Connecticut Water Company, correct, Matt? Correct. Yeah, and we all, I think we're pretty sure if people don't know the land, to the northeast is a large boundary of Connecticut Water Protected Area. We get a lot of drinking water from there. The western area of the park is presently wooded. Portions of that area contain environmental constraints, and you say that again, with limit or complicate the ability to accommodate additional physical development, primarily wetlands, water courses, and associated escarpments, as well as the adjacent public portable water supply well field owned by Connecticut Water Company, which is in part likely directly related to these resource areas hydrologically. Pretty factual with that one. Everyone yep. kind of agrees with that? The lease would leave approximately 10.5 acres of the eastern portion of the park to the town. Is that pretty much correct? There is no apparent park and recreation master plan to consult for guidance. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I'm thinking back, we never had one in my day either. It probably hasn't been one developed since. Probably there isn't a master plan. There is no directly relevant or specific guidance in either the existing or the proposed draft POC just was served to inform the commission's decision as to request an advisory report. Well, I'm not sure. I think the town manager brought up some points there. We probably can strike that one out, I think. Um, you know, in all honesty, having worked on a POCD, I think there is some, some valid points there. So I, I would recommend to the commission that we do not adopt um, number, seven. number seven. Is that meet approval with everybody? I'm looking here. Is everyone okay with that? 
So we're going to strike out number seven. It is the Commission's understanding that the project principals intended beneficiaries of the lease have proposed and will construct appropriate and sufficient mitigation to offset impacts to user groups affecting the Council's intended action. Um, I th think that covers, I don't know if I want to get any more specific than that um, at this particular time if this resolution passes and this project goes forward. I have more to say about that potentially maybe in the future if this project goes forward. But I think that's enough to cover the intent, Matt, I'm looking. Yeah, I just seen a typo too. There should be a, a, a word by, affected by the council's intended action. Yes. Just clarification. Yeah, and it's just intended as an, as an understanding, a general understanding, a consensus of the commission that that's, that's their feeling. Right, and if I just, uh, so I can just talk about everyone understands where we're coming from here. Um, is that we fully realize that if we give this referral tonight and if this project goes forward, that we are going to lose two softball fields in particular there. We noticed some plans potentially to build back out the recreational area, the, 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 you know, the, the kids' play skates and things of that nature, but the two softball fields in general, and that is something we cannot afford to lose in the town of Enfield, nor should the town be willing to pay for that loss. So I think Excuse this is me, a reference Mr. to Chair, that. I yes don't think we should be talking about that. Okay, that's why that we have not okay. given any master plan, nope. site plan review. So these but based plans on what, basically based on what we saw here could change yes. drastically. So. Yes, but based on what we saw here, and that's the intent of number eight. Number nine, sufficient proximal mitigation will be provided to offset associated impacts on affected users. And such mitigation should be established and fully operational as a first phase of any related private development project. Did we have a problem with that? Nope. Okay. So we have eight instead of nine. We have eight. We're not going to accept number seven. Correct. And having said that, before we vote, I would just like to have staff help me out here so we can explain the referral process. So I'm going to I'm going to try to explain it so that everyone in the commission here understands. And if I'm incorrect in any of my assumptions, please feel free to correct me immediately. Having gone through this once before. Um, Basically, we're going to be voting on 824 referrals, we said before, to, you know, go along with the council so they can proceed to at least negotiate for a potential lease of part of Brainerd Park, whatever that is. If the vote is negative, the town council can override that with a two-thirds vote, I believe. And at that point, they, if they decide to even do that, if it's a negative vote, and if they decide to do that, then they have another choice. They can decide to either refer the rest of the process after that back to us, or they can assume the role of the Planning and Zoning Commission for that project, mm. if I'm not correct, having yeah. been on that end of it many years ago. Thank you. Thank you. So that's basically the dilemma we are with this particular referral at this point in time. Any discussion? Any discussion? Is everybody ready for a vote? I'm not sure how you want to read that, Mr. Secretary, but I think we can we can waive the full reading of it since we just went through it. I can certainly, uh, um, I can certainly read in the uh, the draft uh, the motion as drafted. Yeah. yeah, but I think we don't need to read all the bullet items. No, so we'll no, waive that. No, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll insert something in there. Uh, but uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, as follows, the Town of Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission acting in its full capacity and authority as the Enfield Planning Commission issues an affirmative CGS report regarding the lease of a portion of Brainerd Park for a private commercial recreational facility pursuant to the following findings noted that there are nine, uh, there will be eight of the nine findings as listed in, in staff's report uh, eliminating uh, Finding number seven. Thank you. And also there's one typo in item number eight. And yes, there's a, a, a typo in item eight. Uh, after the word affected, I believe we're going to insert the word by. It would read affected by the council's intended action. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Chairman Higley. Any discussion on a motion? Nope. Seeing on roll call vote. Uh, Lou Fiore. No. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majmudar. Four. Uh, Vinnie Gorillo. Four. 
Nicholas Lefakis. Abstain. And John Petronella is four. See that? It was passed six, two, so five, four, one against, and one abstain. Yeah. Motion is passed. Refer to have your referral. And moving on. Moving on. Moving on to SPR 1906. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Okay. No, no, it's no, it's Park, it's Park Avenue. It's the old public. No, we're, we're doing old. We're doing old public hearings. Oh, oh yes. It's Park yes. Avenue. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Sorry. So, yeah. public hearing. Uh, Park Avenue. Park Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at the regular meeting on Thursday, January 26th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3055, 78 Park Avenue. Application for construction of a new two-family home, Maiden Builders, LLC applicant, Lori and David Longy, owners, Map 39, Lot 4, R33 zone. <clears throat> Have any applicant uh, and representative come forward, please identify yes. yourself for the record. Uh, Attorney Richard Case, uh, 10 Tower Lane, Avon, Connecticut. And Art Christian, professional engineer. Thank you. Have a presentation for us, uh, or? Mr. Christian will okay. promote the presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, so at the moment, um, I was wondering if there's nothing's going to go up, or with the no, I didn't bring anything to put up. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that that's fine. Yeah, we have we have okay, the plans. Okay, okay, the you plans the are plan. up there. Yeah, okay, that's do. yeah, that's I guess that's what I wanted to know. So. Um, at the present time, there is a small um, garage on that property and some paved area. Um, the applicant wants to put a two-family house on that lot, um, and the plans you have in front of you will, will show that. Um, there's been some drainage work. There's driveways that are on there to accommodate uh, four vehicles. Um, and um, I guess that, I don't know, that's... That's about all I have, yeah. Just so you're aware, uh, uh, approximately a month ago, uh, two variances were obtained. Uh, one for density because of the, uh, the, the section of uh, uh, the citation of uh, 3.4, 3.20. Um, it requires a density. And then there was the issue because on one side of this particular lot is a one-family house on the other side is a two-family house, and behind it is uh, a large area of wetlands. So that technically we didn't have uh, two-family houses on both sides of ours, so that would, were contiguous. And the issue always is the language doesn't allow you to go across the street, which had a two- or three-family house. So we uh, requested, and the ZBA granted a variance uh, for that. So the two variances relative to the density calculation and as to uh, abutting uh, two-family houses were varied by the commi that commission. Thank you. Um, I also... Uh and actually, I, I don't know if you want me to talk about this, but the um, staff's report, uh, we did get a chance to look over that report as it came in, and there are certainly um, several items on there which which we are we will address and, and can go forward and address. Um, if you want me to lay those out now, yes, I please. can, or you can wait to No, them. please. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, uh, sorry about that. Um, it, the item number one in the technical review discusses um, basement sump pumps and um, disposal of, of clean water um, and putting it into the, and their recommendation was putting it into the storm drainage system, um, which certainly we can we can do and, and make a plan and also fill out a permit to do that. 
Um, item number two um, discusses uh, traffic changes, and there, there aren't going to be any. Um, item number three, uh, let's see. That was the waiver. Oh, for that was the waiver you just got. I'm sorry, yes. Um, and the, the four, certainly we were going to um, do a, some sort of um, A2 survey because it's so tight there, I would, I would recommend that to the owner. Both a, an as-built survey, but also a foundation survey before the concrete's even poured. Yes, and then um, engineering had a comment that talked about um, the curb cut yep. and where we enter the road. Um, and certainly we can move that driveway and I'm gonna talk to staff because at one point, um, I don't know whether it's planning and zoning staff or engineering staff, um, they wanted the driveway shifted a little bit because there's a telephone pole there. So we shifted it over what we thought was the appropriate amount of 10 feet. Um, and it sounds like uh, the engineering staff now wants it moved back a little bit. So certainly we can work with them. I, um, and, and we don't have a problem moving it one way or the other um, as long as we avoid that that uh, that pull. Um, and I think that I think that was about it. Oh, there was something about um, the engineering also mentioned uh, zero net increase running off the site. And that's why I originally mentioned that there is quite a bit of um, between the buildings that's on there now and the pavement, which has some grass growing over it. But there's um, there's about 500 square feet of uh, new impervious area, which we can work with staff and figure out a way to handle that to um, uh, so that we don't have um, I'm trying to use the wording they have here. So we manage stormwater runoffs on the property, providing zero net increase from free development conditions. But it's not as much as you would think looking at the size of the structure because there is a bunch of impervious on that property already. Um, you can see that through aerial photos. You can't see it with a little bit of, I was there yesterday with a little bit of snow on the ground. Um, but there is a bunch of pavement uh, in front of that garage structure that's in the back. And of course, that, that'll come out and the pavement will come out. And I think anything right, else? Attorney? So, okay. So, it, it, any questions from staff? Any questions for uh, Ms. Uh, no, I just want to note yeah. that in, in technical matters involving the assistant town engineer, obviously we would defer to that department. Yeah. So, I mean, the engineer is correct that initially there was a design with the curb cut. We shifted things because of the pole. And now we're kind of shifting back to where we started for the most part. So we don't have any issue with that at all. And we work very closely with Mr. Kabibbo um, in that regard. Well, so, I see some of the conditions are already in here. Basically, the and the conditions, item number seven has the uh, provided the building official with a certified A2 as that's already one of the conditions. Right. And 14A addresses the driveway curve cut location. What I can't find in here is the tie into the sewer, uh, uh, you know, street system. Yeah, I did not include that as okay. a condition because a, I didn't get a chance to talk to to John about that specifically. But uh, so when we wrote it up, we wrote it up more uh, kind of softer, for lack of a better term, where they would post approval, solicit kind of the input from John, and he could determine he do whether or not yeah. you know they because it is a permit under his jurisdiction. Okay. So I didn't want to say shall. So you're comfortable that's kind of somewhat addressing these conditions? Yeah, post okay. approval, we work closely with the building official, okay. engineering okay. department, et cetera. So. Okay. Oh, and, and I actually saw uh, the three of us getting together, Matt, John, and, yeah. and, and I, just to, you know, especially the stormwater part. We, um, we actually can mimic existing stormwater, but if we want to make things a little bit better, especially if you're having a, a sump pump that, that runs, so, you know, often um, we don't want that, you know, Icing the roads and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Is there any questions from the commission? No. Is is the garage the, the garage is that's coming down? That's getting coming down. Coming yes, down. I thought. Yeah. Figured yes. as much. Seen the lot. Yeah. I don't know how you're doing. <laughs> leaving it up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that is going to be removed. In fact, uh, one of the comments of the staff was to the debris be properly <laughs> removed. <laughs> from the <site. laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yep. Commissioner Montador. Yeah, mine is more a question. Uh, it's more a comment than anything else. I see two proposed driveways. Yes. So I'm assuming each one serves one of the units. Yes, yes. Was there consideration given to a single driveway 
so that the bituminous square footage could be reduced to some degree? Um, because of the width of the front yard and the fact that we're we can't get to the backyard to do anything because of the size of the building on that particular parcel. Um, uh, it really was about the same amount of pavement to get four cars to be able to swing in, to have four lined up, and then you know have the space for them to turn in, as it was to have just the two single driveways. Okay. And then they would, both tenants would always be um, in each other's way a little bit more. Yeah, you could be blocking each other. They could be blocking each other, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, just a little bit of carelessness, the next thing you know, one of the tenants can't get in or out, so. Okay, so that's makes sense, that. yeah. yeah, thank you. Yep. Uh, I have a, a question and just a general comment. As far as a question, I think on one side of the property there's an existing uh, border of trees. So uh, according to the plan, it looks like that's remaining. Can you confirm that? Yes. As far as we go, I think I think they're actually over the line. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're they, they're owned by the uh, adjacent property owner. Okay. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're trying to keep things. Well, we didn't have to touch, especially in the borders on both sides. We didn't. We didn't want to uh, um, both cause. You know, anytime you touch it, now you got a chance of causing more water to run off the property or or ponding or anything. So we didn't want to get, get into that at all. Thank you. And and just the comment was kind of um, relates to kind of the 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 effort the applicants put in. I think it's a good plan. Um, just something as we're going looking into uh, our regulations. Um, section 4.30.3, which has the uh, uh, density uh, restrictions, which makes it very, very difficult to build duplexes. Uh, just a very smart way, a very smart gradual development. Um, and we've seen here how, how, how long this application stayed open. Um, so I, I just want to point that out for, for us to be aware of, for, for staff, something that uh, really ought to be addressing uh, in the near future. I could assure you that's one of the things at the top of the list. Right. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, yeah. a, we've, all, we've, we've put our notes in the zoning yes. regs. Yeah. That's been highlighted. <laughs> I don't want to have a longer discussion about it, but no. Uh, I'm, I'm clearly, we understand. Tom the, and I clearly have understand quite a the limit conversation about the language. So yeah, clearly, we understand limitations of that regulation, right. without a doubt. Thank you. And the and timing, of, timing of when it was drafted. In, so. in history, yes. yes. That's what I was implying. Thank you. <laughs> um, and any other questions? Seeing that, we'll open up for the public. We can always come back. Any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application for the third time? Anyone for? Seeing none. Is there anything else you'd like to say, uh, Mr. Applicant? Mr. Applicants? Oh, thank no? you. No? No. Is there anything else from the from the uh, group? <clears throat> the staff, you're all set. All set. Okay. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion made by second. Commissioner Higley, second by Commissioner Gray, to close the public hearing. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record show it was unanimous to close this public hearing. Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready, and I think there's, what, 25 conditions? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 305578 Park Avenue uh, to be assigned street addresses 82 and 84 Park Avenue. Special permit and site plan review application for the proposed two-family home and related site improvements. Lori and David Longy, owners. Eric Sislik, applicant. Gary LeClaire. LS applicant representative map 39 lot 4 R33 zone according to the plans and application materials of record and with the following modifications and 25 conditions. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Any discussion? Mm -mm. Seeing none, roll call vote whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Uh, uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majmudar. Four. Uh, Vinny Grillo. Four. Nick Lafake is four. And John Petronella is four. I think the record showed is unanimous uh, in, in you know approval of this application. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and what I you know, wasn't the right time to say it. I'm glad you, I got stopped. Yeah. But um, the, the staff has been great in helping us through this long and yeah. sure process. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, we appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for the comments.
Okay, now we're going to move on to new business, SPR 1906-379, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, uh, SPR <clears throat> number 1906-3739, Pearl Street, application to open cafe, Derisol Stovall, applicant, E&D Stovall, LLC, owners, map 24, lot 79, TD5 zone. Thank you. The applicant, in the, you know, <laughs> identify yourselves for the record. Yes. Yes. Good evening. First and foremost, thank you so much for your time. We truly appreciate it. Okay. It's been long going for over two years that we're now here. I'm going to go in here. Absolutely. Um, I'm sorry. Sit. Sit. Yeah. Go here. You want to stand using one of the hand mic. Okay. I'll sit. That's fine. Um, so my husband and I actually, my name is Darius Stovall. We're the owners of Yindi Stovall LLC. We actually um, have four boys and are have been in Enfield for four years, going on five years that we purchased our home here. So when we came to Enfield, we had a lot of plans, right? A lot of vision of like what we can do in the town and how we can support the town, especially having four younger boys. Um, we got the opportunity to purchase this building in 2021, and the only way our offer was accepted was we wrote a letter to the previous owner of 30 years, um, which also owned the adjacent building, Diana's Bakery. And I told them the plans I had there. So for two years, um, 3739 Pearl Street has been vacant because I told them I would do a restaurant there. So with that being said, we're here today. And um, our vision for it is to open a small cafe in town just to diversify it and bring a little bit of the Latin flavor. Um, there's a lot of like other, you know, different cultures in Enfield, but there's nothing with Spanish food, which I'm Puerto Rican myself, so I'm like, I need my food here. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people agree that it's needed in the area. Um, my husband and I tend to drive a lot, 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes, to be able to go to Hartford or to Western Mass to get Spanish food. And I'm like, that's that's a no-no. We have to get going on this. So we're here today just pretty much to present that and seeing if we can get your support to be able to go ahead and move forward with our Latin cafe in town. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And just for the record, we didn't, unless, you, unless you don't want to, can you please give your home address? Yes, my home address is 21 Eileen Lane in Enfield, Connecticut. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Questions for the applicant? I, go looking here. I think we've all, I guess not. I know. I owe you guys all the plate. <laughs> when are you going to open? <laughs> I think we all know the building. I think, yeah. we're pretty, I think we're pretty, those of us who've been in town a long time, know, and certainly yep. know the area in the building. Mm -hmm. And we're really glad to see probably some development going on there. Yes. Um, is there any? Yeah. Is there any questions for the applicant? No. No. I have one. Commissioner Higley. You aren't going to serve liquor or wine, are you? No, Virginia. No. Okay. No, we actually have a church right next door, which is Holy Ghost Temple, and we're um, directors and members of this church as well. So for us, it's it's kind of a no no. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, Turn question on. for the applicant. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, um, uh, I, I guess it's the local parking area uh, in, in, in the zone that you have highlighted on the map, and I'm seeing, of course, across from the old, uh, where Corona's Market is, there's that public lot there. Mm -hmm. There is a lot that is across from thereabouts on the High Street by, uh, by the AMVETS. Uh, I guess that's a public lot. I, I'm not sure. Is, is that a public so there's just one public lot on as not as not yeah, corner street. as not tuck. Okay. Yeah. Now the one that's right across from the building is owned by Diana's Bakery. Yes. And that building is currently up for sale right now. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, it's pretty much nobody parks there until they find a new owner for Diana's Bakery, and then at that point, we can always cross the line with those owners and seeing what could be done in regards to using that park and if needed. Okay, because yeah, I'm just looking at what was highlighted mm -hmm. here, because there's a lot across from where the Amvets is, and then then there's a lot at the High Street where the uh, um, uh, Serapis is. Yeah. That's also highlighted as. Yeah. So everything within 500 feet, I was told that we can potentially use the parking if needed. Um, okay. So those are just options if ever needed um, with additional parking space to be used. Okay. And that would include a church parking lot, too, I would imagine, too. So the church itself, actually, yeah, they use yep. pretty much everything. And it's yep. different hours of operation, yep. so it won't yep. go through with, yeah. And we have four unique motions that we have to approve on this, yes. So 
besides the main motion, we have three motions that we would have to vote yep. on the affirmative. We all understand the parking limitations in Thompsonville. Yep. Mm -hmm. We all understand that that's always under review, and hopefully it'll be improved over time as we go forward. And um, so enough said on that. So yep. staff want to add anything on this? I know you've been working closely with, with, with them, Lori. Uh, we have yeah. been very working quite a bit together. Yeah. So um, I'm so happy that we're here tonight, finally. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, historically, all of this parking for this site has been off-site, except for four spaces. Yeah. So, yeah. and there's been mixed use there since it was built in 1915. I think it was. Uh, or I think earlier than that, probably. Well, no, it was construction in 1915. I think. Oh, 19, I said 50. Oh, yeah, 15. 1915. 15, yeah. Absolutely, that was one nine one five. That was during World War One time. Absolutely, so. remember the building well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I remember as a kid, I remember the building well. We used to go in there for a lot of different businesses that were in that building. Yeah, I didn't mean it that way. That's okay. That's funny. I mean, I've been around a long time. Oh I think I've been around that long. <laughs> right, Vinny? <laughs> I think everybody knew what I meant. I did. Yeah, so I, I, I've tried to word the the um, waiver provision motions yeah. um, as best I could. It's, it is a little complicated, but basically it's the fact that there's no on-site parking except for those four sites, so you made a waiver that 50% can go off yep. site, and then you're going to make a waiver that of that 50%, all of the, all of the parking could be off site as the required parking. Yep. So, should we, so we should vote on each motion separately before the main motion, correct? Yes, yep. please. Yep, Commissioner Petronell. Yep. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the waiver of section. 8.120 to eliminate the requirement of a site plan based on the fact that there are no proposed changes to the historical site. Is there a second? Second. Mo motion made by Commissioner Petronello, seconded by Commissioner Lefakis. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, do we need a roll call on this? Yeah, we probably should. Yeah, we probably should. I was going to yeah. save you some time, right. but that's all right. Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majmudar. Four. Vincent Garillo. Four. Nicholas Lefakis. Four. And John Petronella's four. Let the record show that it was unanimous for that motion, that well, the waiver of Section 8.120. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd also like to make a motion to approve on street parking per Section 8.124, note number six, to allow up to 50% of off site parking to be within 500 feet of the site. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Higley. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, Secretary, when are you ready? Yep. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Mm. Uh, Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majwadar. Four. Vincent Grillo. Four. Nick Lefakis. Four. And John Petronella is four. The record showed that there was a unanimous seven uh, to waive that um, section <clears throat> 8124. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the reduction of on site parking to be four per section 8.124, note number seven, based on historical non-conforming nature of this site and the available off-site <clears throat> excuse me, off -site parking lots and on-street parking within 500 feet of the property. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by, a motion made by uh, Secretary Petronello, seconded by Commissioner Lefakis. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call please, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Louis Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majwadar. Four. Vincent Grillo. Four. Nicholas Lefakis. Four. And John Petronella is four. Let the record show that it was unanimous to waive section 8124. Before the main motion, I just have one question for staff. It looks like on the main motion that conditions 16, 17, 18, and 19 are struck out. So Correct, because they're, they're really irrelevant to okay. this application. And 22 and 23 also. Yes. So in fact, there's only 21 conditions, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I believe so. Yes, I just wanted to get that. It's only 21 conditions, John. 20, uh, 20, 20 conditions. No. Yeah, yeah, right, 20. You're, yeah, you're right, 20. Yeah, I, yeah you're six okay. of them stricken out. Yep, thank you. Okay. 20, yeah, 20, yep, 20. conditions. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve SPR number 1906, 37 to 39 Pearl Street. Site plan review application of Derisol, Stovall, and... <clears throat> and owner as E and D Stovall LLC for a conversion from a retail rush uh, from a retail to a restaurant map 054 lot 0033 with the following conditions 
uh, of approval in accordance with the below reference plans. And by motion made by Secretary Petronella, seconded by Commissioner Lafakis. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, roll call. Uh, Luz Fiore, <coughs> Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Kiran Majmudar. Four. Vincent Guerrillo. Four. Nicholas Lafakis. Four. And John Petronella is four. Thank you. Let the record show is unanimous. You've been granted, and good luck with your business endeavor. Look thank forward to going so to We look forward yeah. to the opening. Yes. Thank you all. And I just want to say thank you so much, thank Lori. You. She has been so patient for so many months with me, and I truly appreciate it. And thank you for, for your patience as well. Absolutely. And perseverance. All right. Look thank to you. see you guys in the evening. restaurant in the future. All right. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Is any old business? No, oh, I don't think so. Any other business? Enforcement reports. And uh, I will mention that, uh, actually, um, Lori did mention to me that if we could just wait uh, till the next meeting for uh, the CEO to give us his spreadsheet. Uh, we did request yeah. that last meeting. He's been pretty busy. So she did ask me, and I said, yeah, yeah, we did no problem. So next, next two weeks we'll have his spreadsheet with all the updates. Just want to let people know that. Any correspondence? Any commissioner's correspondence? Commissioner DeGray. Um, I was just curious because I got the email from the Connecticut, what is it called? I'm sorry. It's, yeah. Yes. And I was just, no, yes. no, no. The uh, Connecticut Federation of Planning, the uh, Bar Association. Newsletter. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if we had money in our budget or do we have to? Yes. Because well, that I'm is. Yes, because I even I've been to several of them. No, no, she's talking about. The she's not talking about education. She's talking about the aqua turf. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, not that's just. Yeah. Not no, no from the bar association, the Connecticut Bar Association for Education. Okay. okay we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, all right. Yeah, I I'm, got lost. Go Jimmy and I go there to that together. That other one to the aquifer because they have good food. <laughs> I'm not talking about that one. Okay. I'm talking the about bar right. Is there money in the budget for yes, that? Is. Is that virtual? Tomorrow. Right. Yes, is that, so is that's really place. important for all of us. Yeah. Every time I go, I learn something new. Yeah. It is virtual and it is on Yes, Saturday. and it's great. And you will, that will not count towards your land use requirement. Yes. I asked about that. So, okay. Um, doesn't matter. And I got that from the, from the Connecticut Bar Association. Yep. Okay. Now, it I does do not. not count. Does not count. Does not. Now, now this is the, the other land, the clear land use sessions that I sent to you, those will count. I did not get Do that we one. get the book from the Bar Association? You have to, it's on your, it's, it's yes, on your Enfield.org email. It's yeah. not going to be sent to your local. No, your, I, I, I yeah, okay. yeah, everybody got it. All right. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah, Wait, I'm, I'm trying on this, this, Rick, give me. Now the AquaTurf, unfortunately, <laughs> um, Never mind. Uh, let me do. Let me see if I. Right. It should be in your outlook. Oh. See, I need I need tutorials. <laughs> now the aquaturf. The ac we have a conflict with the aquaturf, and that is the night of our public hearing for the POC. Uh, that's February thirteenth. No, March twenty third. No, the the public hearing. That's for the town council. That's not us. Oh. Our public hearing is March twenty third. That's the same night as the aquaturf. Can't we change it? Mr. Chairman, I actually reached out to the AquaTurf, or actually the um, Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies, and asking if, because there was nothing on there saying that they were going to have this. So I don't know if they're even going to have it this year. Oh. Oh. So. Oh, they had it, they had it in the news newsletter. Yeah. It's, it's here. Newsletter. It's in here in the Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies quarterly newspaper, winter 2023. is down the block. Oh, the Federation will hold its annual conference on March 23rd, 2023, at the AquaTurf Country Club in Plantsville, Connecticut. We're going. And what was the date again? Here, I'll give it to you. March 23rd. Yeah, I have one, but I just. Uh, passing on down. Vinny, would you mind giving it to her? I'd like You need steps? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. I didn't read this one. <laughs> 
So everybody kind of everybody else got the email on the education. You're all saying realize that 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 whole day seminar, uh, you know, real time seminar. We're not going yeah. physically. Is not credit for the training, and we have to do how many hours within two years? Four, 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 just oh, four hours. But one of them has to be affordable housing or housing. Yeah. So I think there's three. There's, I, I think there's three, maybe four. Yeah. That would. And, and they're free. Right. And it's virtual, so you could sign they're up. Virtual and, also. And they'll hold more through the year if, you, if for some reason those dates don't work. Yeah. And we have two years to take those, not one year. No, I think it's one. Is it one year? Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. Is that every year, Lori? That we have to take it four hours or just every other year? Or that would be one. Yeah. I, I'll have to double check that. I have. I believe it is one because I, I remember the date that you need to have this done. It starts January 1st of 23 and you need to have that completed by sometime in March of 24. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe that's why I was thinking two years. We, have, we it, it's a rolling year here, so it's not yeah. like it's not it's not December thirty first. No, that's right. Maybe that's, maybe that's why I was thinking two years. Is there any other business? Any other anything else you want to add, Lori? Any? Oh yeah, I have oh. a couple things. Okay. Actually. All right, go ahead. And um, can I have the handouts there? Where's, where's all the stuff she's got a couple things. She grabbed the book like this big. You know what? Well, we'll so hopefully, oh, you're just taking out a couple it. things. Huh. Did you get any of these? Yes. Yes, we did. Oh. Yeah, we Yay. got them. That's why we got them. Find them here. Yeah, we got them. Yahoo! Yeah, Georgie gave them to us. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, this is the solar farm that is on Raffia Road. Um, Proposed solar farm. Per, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. So, um, we gave you the, the overall map, which, you know, it just looks like a big field of arrays. Um, but then the final grading plans are attached, and you can see that there is, um, as you all may recall that when you see topo topography, the, the closer the lines together, the, the steeper it is. So there's a lot of those really steep lines on this. And it turns out that most of them are terrace escarpment slopes. Big escarpment. Which was not, um, was not mentioned in the report, in, in this report. Yeah. You actually got a copy of it. <laughs> that, that kind of weighs a lot. Did you read it? Georgie did. You're kidding me. She, she read it. I believe it. So, I but, believe it. I so, believe she did. <laughs> she's <laughs> awesome. Um, so, I mean, we, we do have some concerns about this just because, um, you know, from an environmental perspective, you don't want to be grading and filling and cutting on TE slopes. So, um, and that's Actually, the Scanic Georgie. River escarpment, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Know any area. Yeah. So, yeah. We worked um, on that side before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we thought that, oh, yeah. um, so the, the oh, Wetlands yeah. Commission, and you will probably remember this, looked at this, but I don't think any of us realized that these were TE slopes. So um, she's, gonna, she's planning on modifying her report to the Siting Council kind of based, based on, on this little memo. I don't think they came to wetlands, just like they didn't come no. to planning and zoning. They just told us they were yeah. going, going to do it. She said, no, I think that you just had a general discussion amongst so. yourselves. Oh, well, so maybe, but I don't remember that's, it. That's my understanding. So, But anyway, we're going to modify the, the report just to, to express our concerns over, you know, the, the basically scraping off of the yeah. TE slopes. So, so what, is, what is our, rec I know, with the, with the solar farms, with the siting council, in this, in this particular instance, because of the topography and the, and the escarpments that there, and I know all about the escarpments, um, what is our recourse? I mean, you know, not that we're opposed to the project, but do, do we have any leverage at all in, um, this, in this particular instance? Um, their comment, you know, it's, it's their decision. However, um, they want to hear from the towns as to if, if we feel that there's any concerns. Yeah. So... Um, okay. You'll keep us in the loop on it? Or you or George, you'll keep us in the loop on it? Yeah, we actually, I think um, the date that we have to have our comments in is like the 5th of February. So um, otherwise, I probably would have put this on the next one. But Okay. 
So if, uh, if you feel that that's warranted, that we express our concerns about that from yeah. an environmental Comments? perspective. Everybody's kind of like look, seeing that this is a good thing for staff to at least comment on. I don't think anyone here is looking to kill the project. They might just have to hopefully realign some things away from the escarpments. Um, but it should definitely be addressed. We all, you know, the escarpments have been a problem here. Now escarpment particularly runs there's all a, the way down. I think, I think there's a provision in the siting council law. Chair. It re, it allows the municipalities, if they want to, they can petition for party status for the proceedings. So that would that would give you a seat at the table, so to speak, after the public comment uh, period closes. If if you wanted to have that status, I think you could request that status, and they I think they would be obligated to grant it to you. And that just gives you, I think, the right. I haven't done siting council work in a long time, yeah, but I think it gives you the right to participate in the discussions directly with the siting council and the applicant. Yeah. And, um, but that's just something to keep in mind if if you want yeah. to. Otherwise, you submit your comments. The public, you know, public comment closes. That's it. And, and that would be similar to like um, an intervener. Yeah, right. intervener petition. Right, intervener. What is uh, I'm, I'm looking around here for comments, Ginny. You, and I think Wetlands already sent in the letter saying that it was okay. The the chair signed it. Right, it right. That's, so, so, that's what I say. I, I I thought you guys had actually discussed this. No. So okay. I I was I didn't discuss it. In but if we did, I don't remember it. Okay. So what what's the, what what is the feel of this? I'm looking for the feel of the majority of this commission. Do you? Um, are we concerned enough that at a minimum we yes. do want staff to at least send a letter to the siting council stating our concerns about the escarpment? Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So at a minimum, that that seems to be where majority of us are headed. At a minimum, do we want to also join? Um, I'm not sure if this is a wetland or or it's us as a, as an intervener in this particular instance. Yes. And the intervener being that. You know, we have a concern about the escarpments. We want to, you know, those are major concerns in the town of Enfield yes. for, you know, my gosh, I can tell you stories about those. Yeah. I'm sure we all could. Do we want to be an intervener in this particular action also? Yes. So I'm looking around. I don't know if we want to have a vote. I'm just, I don't know if we need a vote, but I'm looking. Nick, what do you think? Yes. Chris? John? Yes. Ginny? Yes. I'm yes. 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 I mean, yes, but I think it should be the purview of the Inland Wetland Commission because it is within their yeah. it is? Okay. escarpment, certain percentage slopes, yeah. certain location away from the wetlands. It should be their purview, not ours. Okay. Right. So, You're right. so could we, having said that, it's really the Inland Wetlands that might want to be intervened, but can you pass on a little staff memo saying that, you know, yes. plan is also saying kind of talk to Zoom, yeah. you know, we're supporting that action if you want to go that route, you know, you know something okay. on that line. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes. Yeah, we are concerned, absolutely, yes. Yeah, Vinny. I just had a quick, just so I, I know the area very well. Is this right behind the stores? Yes, okay. but there is also a lot of flat land so before you drop off. Yeah. There's really no flat land. Oh, there is. Huh? It's all hills. There's the water that runs yeah. by the top. Um, there's a water pump out there in the middle of nowhere's land that's behind changed. Indian Run. Yep. Oh, that's. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah, yeah, but still, farther down. yeah. Farther away. Going down yeah. there, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. all the way going to the stores. Yeah. I really don't know. Really, the flatland is right behind. The store, um, that's it. The, yeah. It's it's very small. Yeah. Well, and they're it, they're they're not little is, hills, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. There's there's some drops, yeah. and there is a lot of water because yep. I know the pump stations down there. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Excuse me. And bless yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I think so, it's yeah, on three to be parcels. At. Three separate parcels. Like it is behind the plaza, but I think it's also in that area where he has the wood that he moved and the gas station. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's that the general area we're talking about. That's yeah. that's a drop. That's yes, not a little. No. No. I totally sure. agree. So it oh. looks like we're, we we like you to draft up something to send to inland wetlands. That yeah, okay. Well, I mean, uh, there, there's also the issue of drainage once they grade all this. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I yeah. don't know where the water's going, and I, I yeah. Yep. So yeah, totally agree. Okay. We will do that. Thank Let's you. Let's see. That's the first thing. Second thing. So this is something that's come up of late. Um, there's a bunch of solar companies that are renting roofs on 
people's houses. Wow. So they're they're it's a roof lease agreement. So basically, they're renting the space on the roof. So and we're having a hard time because that's basically a business. So you are now offering your home for a business. You're renting your roof to a solar company. You're not benefiting at all except for the lease agreement. So we've kind of gone back and forth with, for, you know. Um, basically what it means, they're, they're not, none of that electricity is going back to any of their use at all. It's right. getting piped the, right to the producer. Right. Okay. And getting paid for the lease? So it's, a business, it's, a it's a business. But are they getting paid cash or are they getting a credit? I think that's a fundamental difference. Right, yeah. Karan? And that was a question I had. Are they getting paid from the producer or are they getting a credit on their Eversource bill? It's my understanding that they're getting paid. Because that was the old, the old version. Yeah. Yeah. That basically sets these up as kind of little, like, yeah. power supply. Yeah. Huh. Rent your rooftop to the utility. Kind of situation. Which is wonderful from an uh, ecology standpoint yeah. and, a, and, a, and a power generation standpoint, but you bring up a good point. Is it a business or not? Did you have any input from any other towns is, is, in your association? Is anyone? Rick, Rick was um, trying to investigate. I think you did a little investigation, but I, I don't know if we've heard from other towns necessarily. It says here, we will lease your roof and pay you a set monthly rate for the next 20 years. <laughs> So the, the they'll help them with the efficiency of their home, and they'll warranty the work, and they'll help them reinstall the system if anything goes wrong. So, on the one hand, they're promoting it, it's promoting solar energy, but on the sec other hand, this is now a business yeah. at a home. Yeah. So we had two applications for zoning permits for people to do this recently, late last year, and we kind of put them on hold a little bit until we did some research through the DP, DPUC staff at the state um, and a couple others, we were able to determine that um, there is no state preemption from local zoning in the statute as, as it was passed. So if, if a local zoning authority were inclined to want to regulate it, you could probably adopt regulations to regulate it. We're not suggesting you do or that you want to or you don't want to. There's just no state preemption, so if you if you want to, you can, and it's something that I think we'll look at when we do the reg amendments. Um, it's we regulate home occupations, we, reg we regulate farm stands, we regulate a whole bunch of commercial enterprises that happen at, at houses for legitimate kind of reasons. The interesting thing with this is that to get to your point, if the solar panel money were a credit versus here you get the money, uh, I'll pay you X amount per month. You drive down the road, you look up, there's no difference from a zoning perspective. The panels are the panels. The question, I guess, is can people now like rent, basically set up situations where they're, you know, kind of getting into these agreements, multifamilies. Uh, there's a whole host yeah. of kind of questions we have. Or so. the large panels on the on the land. Yeah, yeah. Put them, right, put them in the structures in yards and things. It has the potential to be, yeah. you know, it's a good idea. It, it's kind of one of those best intentions going awry kind, yeah, of, yeah. kind of thing. So what's the intention? Uh, I, I think so, just as your chairman, I was, I'd certainly want some more information. The staff can maybe do some investigation about what other towns are doing with this, and we can yeah. get back to this particular issue when we start looking at the regulations. Yep. And maybe we decide to do nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating we do anything, but I think we need more information to make a, a value judgment, and, and, and if so be it. If not, we just leave it. Is everyone in agreement with that? I getting out of hand really quick. Yeah, I think that uh, I agree with Lou. We need more information, but I'm glad the staff brought it to our attention because it has the well, possibility we of growing right. and, and being yeah. really bad. Uh, you know, I, I will say that um, it was while Rick was away and, and it was like this thing was just waiting for us to sign off or, or yeah. deny it. So I did sign off on them because I was like, I, I'm not sure what to do. And now we still we've got at least one more right now. Yeah. Mm. So. So maybe we can kind of maybe escalate a little bit the research on that. I hate to do that to you guys. 
<laughs> well, you know, su surprisingly, we, we, like don't, research. we don't have a ton of applications right now, okay. is which is weird. Is there, like, weird. a phone number to call that you can call and say, hey, do I get cash if I rent you my roof? It or says yeah, you will the, pay yeah, you the... a set monthly rate for the next right, 20 years. It's a company. That's what pay. I'm That's not is, credit. It's not a credit. That's it's a definite that, pay. A so then it's, it's a home Kachinga. occupation, or is it just like renting a room in your house? Like I have an extra bedroom, right. so um, somebody yeah. needs a room. You know, I was thinking once, and I want a roommate to share costs, so I just rent that room. So that's kind of one of those really gray areas because <laughs> welcome to our world yeah so i don't know what about how about a, i don't know is is it a business or isn't it a business is it just like renting space like getting a roommate yeah I think I, we, I, selling eggs think we need yeah, to see selling I, eggs. I, I, I kind of see it almost in a in a in a form of like renting space but for like um kind of like storage Right. Like, like if, if, you know, if, if, so if somebody... So if I go to your house and you have a garage, I want to rent your garage, you say, sure, okay, yeah. give me X number of dollars every month. And yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, and, and we regulate the, the, the physical form of it, and, and right. all, we don't regulate the operation of the business. Yeah. So, and I we mean... Regulate, yeah. We regulate our solar panels yeah. on the houses, so... As far as appearance. Appearance, so yeah. you can't yeah. have real ugly... I'm also somewhat surprised that a normal residential roof square footage and installation of solar panel on top of it is economically viable for the installing company. Because well, they're gaining all of the all, all of the juice. Yeah. Yep. It's economically viable for a homeowner. Yep. Well, for the installer, what I'm saying is, if you go to Rafia Plaza. In East Windsor, not Rafia Plaza, Sophia Plaza. Oh, Sophia. In East oh, yeah. Windsor, yeah. a huge roof up there. And that's basically uh, rented by the solar installer, manufacturer, whoever. And that makes more sense economically to do that. Mm -hmm. But when you have a normal residential home with the solar panels on top, and you get so many trees all around it that are going to grow or get taller, uh, Mm. Economically, somebody, as far as the commission is concerned, it doesn't matter. We decide one way or the other. Yeah. But as yeah. far as the other side of the equation is concerned, yeah. something doesn't happens, sound what happens when yeah. quite logical. I think, you know, the homeowner's gaining one way or the other. They're either gaining the money or they're gaining the Power. credits. Yeah. Because they could put it on themselves and gain the credits, right. which yeah. is, in yeah. a sense, money. Right. Yeah. So I mean that I think this is our problem is we could go back and forth on yeah. this and mm -hmm. it's so why don't we just see why don't we just kind of look around and see if what how some other okay. towns are handling this and okay. just get back to us when you're ready. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, when you're ready, when you feel in confident, the meantime, you have enough we'll information. Probably to sign off on these unless we yeah, find I, some egregious yeah. design or something. John, you look. You look, what, what, you look what's, what's the town attorney got to say about this? Perplexed. Yeah. 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 I haven't talked to him. Well, yet. but if we change our regs, then we can. That's what I'm saying. Well, I yeah, I know. Well, we can is regulate it, is it the, a ones the ones yeah. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my suggestion at this yeah, point, yeah. not quite proper perhaps, is to have the homeowner install it in his name or her name <clears throat> so that he's got the solar panel, he derives some benefit from it, and while we are still deliberating what and how. So at least something moves forward rather than just say no. Mm, we are yeah. going to sure. wait another whatever number of months before we figure out. Mm. Just a way to help them out. Yep. Uh, well, of course, right. solar John, power is a great John idea. John brought up a good point, if I can get back control of this conversation. We've got like five going on here at once. John brings up a good point, which I, you know, maybe you do want to run it by uh, town attorney staff a little bit, just to, you know, high level, whatever level you feel is appropriate and get back to us with some information whenever you feel you've accumulated enough so we can discuss. Go ahead. I have an observation. If they're getting paid to rent it, then they don't own the solar panels. Then the company that's paying them, that's personal property. And are they being taxed on it? 
Good question. They're not. Different no, issues. they should be. I know. <laughs> right. So, I mean, here we go. We open up a whole can here, which is appropriate because we have an issue here. It's a little thing. Because they need an LLC. It's a little it's, 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 it's a little thing that can mushroom here, but well, it's and, a, and, you it know, needs in, to. In, in our proposed POCD, we yeah. are supposed to be promoting solar power. Yeah. And, and no one said we're not. We're just, we just yeah. want to find out what, and what's going on with this particular type of application. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we move on from this one? Everyone's yeah. pretty good direction yeah. anyways? Yeah. Okay. Is there Next. Anything else that I had? I think that was it. Good job on the 824, guys. That's, that was not an easy task for you, so did good. And I don't think I have anything else. Um, Any applications received? Just the yes. CSI. No, not just. Um, we got um, 21 Manning Road, SPR 1911. This is mostly exterior improvements on parking, entry, overhead doors, uh, um, concrete aprons. So Which it's probably going to be an administrative approval. Which, is that 21 Ma is Manning that the one? Is that on the south side or the north yeah. side? South side. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we just got that in. So um, that will probably be, I mean, we'll probably ask to have that done administrative approval. It's mostly just some, like, fix-its. And then we've already got uh, 281 hazard on there. And I think that's it. Okay, any, anything else for anyone? I'll Move entertain a motion adjourn. to adjourn. A motion made by Commissioner Higley, seconded by Commissioner DeGray to adjourn. This meeting of the planning zoning, all in favor, all in favor? Yeah. signify aye. saying aye. aye. This meeting of the planning zoning is adjourned at 836. Wow.